But their story didn't end there. How could there have been only one? And he's back in business. Is the worst idea in the history of bad ideas. Part two is the final chapter in the violent history of... This time, it's personal. Hello! Oh my god! Crew, we've arrived! Disruptors have assembled! Welcome, gang. We got a great weekend. Who's that? Benoit Blanc, the detective? Mr. Prompt, I cannot overstate my gratitude to be here. When's the murder mystery start? I've invited you all to my island. Hi. Because tonight, a murder will be committed. My murder. Once you're dead, will we still be able to talk to you? Yeah, I'm not playing dead the whole weekend, dude. Well, this is truly delightful. Across the island, I've hidden clues. You will have to closely observe each other. If anyone can name the killer, that person wins our game. Any questions? <laughs> Allie Berry. That has a kick. Oh my God, what happened? Oh, holy shit. Ladies and gentlemen, there's been a murder and the killer is in plain sight. For at least one person, this is not a game. I must insist that nobody touch the body. Jeez, detective, who killed the party? I need to find a motive for murder. Everyone would stab a friend in the back to hold on to this rich bastard. Ooh, 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 killed it. You're all friends. Why would anyone commit murder? Are we even gonna talk about the elephant in the room? Am I the elephant? Yeah, you're the elephant. You're not that bad. Danger here. Are you calling me dangerous? Well, we'll see. Let it all out. Hell yeah! This is reckless. The killer wouldn't hesitate to kill again if it covers their tracks. You must be really great at Clue, huh? I'm very bad at dumb things. Ticking boxes, running around, searching all the rooms. It's just a terrible, terrible game. A sequel. A sequel. Um, if you like disruptors, innovators, influencers, private islands, Google News alerts, cars on the road, plans on napkins, the Mona Lisa, clear with a K, COVID pods, trivia boxes, and if you like the exploits of the world foremost private detective, Benoit Blanc, you'll like the sequel we'll talk about this week. It's Glass Onion, A Knives Out Mystery, the follow-up to Ryan Johnson's Knives Out um, welcome to Brand to Sequel, the podcast just about sequels. We're super excited. My name's Emmanuel. What it do? It's Andrew. Hey, it's John. And we've got a guest. We're we're doing this virtually, BT Dubs, and it's been a while, but we've got a guest who also, I think, did the last one virtually. Because <laughs> you is it is it? It's no, true. We Brand were in person. Oh, were really? We? Well, then why do I have the Halloween Ends soundtrack? Uploaded I think up? the, we did do that virtually. We did Halloween Ends virtually. Oh, I oh, forgot okay. we did yeah. that. Yeah, 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 we did. Well, it's Brent. Hello. Just and, and just so everyone knows, I consider us a group of disruptors. We're real, we're freaks. We're pushing the envelope, making you think a little different. I, I, um, think, uh, I think I could speak for all of us when I say we're closer to being eruptors than mm. uh, disruptors. You know what I'm saying? Are you talking about like... You know what I'm talking about. I really, I feel like, do you have to go to the bathroom, Brent? Because we can pause <laughs> right now if that's what you're trying to say. Oh. If you're saying you're about to... I was kind of lost for a second. Up. I was like, whoa. Shit. I just did. <laughs> it smells like glass onions in here. <laughs> Ass onions. Damn it! I was gonna. Wow. I was saving that joke for a fucking. <laughs> I was saving that joke for a later fucking time. You just took it. Just, just say it fresh. Yeah. Say it John, you waited <laughs> like too a long. fresh <laughs> ass onion. <laughs> Two minutes in, you waited way too long for us to use ass onion. Well, um, look, it's the holidays. This episode is coming out 
right around, I think, the time of old St. Nick coming down that chimney pipe. Um, but this is a very special sequel because of the release method of this. We've only seen it once in theaters, and it's coming out on Netflix. I think it's out on Netflix by the time this episode drops. So keep that in mind, everyone. We've only seen it once. We haven't done, which is kind of fun. It's kind of a like a first reactions. Yeah, right? definitely. And less of a deep, deep dive. We're going to remember a lot um, of wrong knows? shit. So like, we're going to, yeah, <laughs> we're probably, especially, yeah. especially for this movie, Some little details, which is yeah, all, like, of, yeah, this movie's all about the rewatch. Yeah, definitely. In a way. Um, but I guess we'll start with you, Brent, since you're our guest. What did you think of the original Knives Out? Oh, the, uh, the original I loved. Um, <clears throat> it was a really refreshing experience because, um, Murder mysteries, uh, I think maybe were more of a thing, you know, like uh, some decades ago and have kind of fallen off. Um, And like Ryan Johnson used his kind of uh, post Star Wars clout to kind of make his own. And um, I think it's so much fun. I mean, just just the murder mystery kind of conceit of like getting all of these actors to play like specific characters who are all very different and unique and just, you know, have a really good time with it. Um, I think the structure of not even just the first one, but of this one too, which we'll get into um, the really, uh, really in a way like subversive, uh, he's a pretty subversive like writer director and like um, it's a pretty subversive kind of story and mystery uh, that kind of, um, unfolds over the course of the first one and uh you know he he gives you stuff up front that you're like oh well i know what's happening i I know like you know what this is gonna be and then that's kind of what he's planning on and then he'll kind of like undercut that with a you know kind of surprise about halfway through that changes your context for everything um, I think the, uh, the first one is so much fun. It's really hilarious. Um, only match maybe by this one. I think this one is, is probably even funnier. Uh, it's really, they're really like comedies, uh, more than like, I don't know, a dramatic murder mystery thing you might be expecting. Um, both are very modern as well. This, this, uh, glass onions, incredibly modern, but, uh, knives out as well. And like its themes and it's kind of timeliness with, uh, what's going on in the world. Like that very much, um, plays into the kind of setting of the movie. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I love the, the first knives out. I think it was on my top 10 that year. Um, just like one of my favorite movies of that year. And, um, I just hope he fucking just keeps making them like forever. Cause fucking Daniel Craig can go till he's like 80. Like he did. He don't need to be like doing stunts for uh, a knives out Benoit Blanc mystery. That's, you know, that's true. He's not bond anymore. Why does he just take up another franchise and just like <laughs> stay with it? He has really kind of. Yeah. yeah. But I loved it. Sorry. I think there's something up with my wife. I think there is. Yeah. I was we'll about see. to say, I, I, think there <laughs> is. I was like, we were watching we're you. Kind you just of kind of figuring like, that out. I was trying to figure out what's going on over here because I just see my Wi-Fi symbol go in and out and I'm like, I'm not doing nothing. You but sound good like 98% of the time. Yeah, and then like I think when you go on a – when you're introducing a topic, you uh, cut off. <laughs> just when I talk, like, you mean? It's a at problem. inconvenient moments. So someone just like, like – yeah, like, Take funny it funny away. I'm sure to, well, and to the, to the <laughs> listener, like, I'm sure it's uh, it's fine. But we're yeah, pointing it yeah, out, it so is. now it's weird. Yeah, <laughs> it's awkward um, now. Exactly. Drew, we talked about how this franchise kind of evolves. What did you think when you heard that not only was Ryan Johnson getting paid half a billion dollars, not, not all to him, but that Netflix was paying such a big chunk of change? What did you think about the fact that there are multiple sequels planned? And this is just one of the two that's been paid for. Um, I'm excited because, um, yeah, I think he, there's no it, – it's crazy that he writes and direct these, directs these things because both of them are, you know, he does masterfully. Um, I think he, like Brent said, uh, he has this power of subversion even with something like, you know, Last Jedi. Um, that, wow. 
uh, that I think it, it works really well for his style of writing and directing. And uh, I think he's very aware and he makes it's almost like he makes movies specifically for movie lovers, which is pretty wild because most people try to get a, a big demographic. Obviously, you're just trying to you're just trying to be super accessible. Um, but uh, these movies like this, I think they you can't really appreciate it like uh, on someone who only watches it once. You know, I'm only going to watch it once and that's it. Um, like the way we said earlier, where it's like, man, that's why this one's so odd because of the the weird release where it was only out for a week and then it's going to be on Netflix. But um I think Netflix made a smart move because I think uh, overall there it's going to be something that like I can see on like Criterion where it's like, damn, it's like, uh, what was it? A uh, uh, marriage story mm. where it's like, holy shit. Like there was no other physical release other than something like this because it's, you know, it's, it's a dope ass movie. So I think it's one of those things that even if Netflix is gone later, you'll still always remember it because of things like this. Um, so, I mean, they might have to sell the rights or some shit later or whatever, but uh, I'm glad he got banked for it. Cause, uh, I think it's, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's well worth their money. And, uh, I, I'm really excited. I'm really excited, especially after watching the second one, I didn't think he was going to be able to capture lightning in a bottle, like the way he did uh, from the first one, how different can it be and stuff like that. But I remember texting you guys after like, holy shit, he knew that we would, you know, dissect it uh, because of the first one, and he knew what we would think to expect. So he kind of plays with that here. And so, what's that going to look on the third, uh, you know, uh, the third time, or the fourth time, or the fifth time? So um, it's super exciting because I think he's he's just really really smart um, in that sense. Um, and then it, it's really really cool to see these unorthodox casts um, act together, where um, I never thought I'd see some of these people in the same movie. And um, and it and the people who take the forefront aren't the people that you think when you look at the the, the call list, you know. So it's it, it's really really awesome, and I think if he follows the same type of um, style uh, as these first two, then he can go on like the way John said. I mean, give me twenty of these. Yeah, Andrew. Actually, you reminded me when you were talking about some of the things that he does in his movies that I probably have to record like a spoiler warning at the beginning of this because we. It's hard to talk about this movie specifically without sounding like the Wikipedia plot summary, which just I don't think you need to put spoils a spoiler everything. warning. I think by the time the general audience hear this, it'll they be should, on right? Netflix, right? Like you know, maybe you can rearrange Hopefully. an episode. Who knows? Yeah, it's just like who knows when this comes out? Just um, release the Ginger Snaps episode twice. Oh, I think Delphin froze again. By the way, okay, it was like, <laughs> he's like this. <laughs> yeah, then, like, I, it's happening. Yeah. yeah, I'm getting pushed out. Um. John, you are a huge fan of Ryan Johnson like we all are. What do you think about what he's doing? I always equate him to like uh, uh, Robert Altman in a way mm. who kind of makes all of these very different movies that are well written but are like Gosford Park is so different than The Player yeah. and so different from MASH and Nashville and you know he's made a Star Wars movie he's made Looper. <laughs> he's done so many different things and now he's in kind of the murder mystery mode and still doing some wild stuff with the structure, like Brent says, um, what do you think about kind of him? I don't, does he do, he doesn't do sequels. What do I think about him? What did he say? Sorry. What, from... you <laughs> did I what do I think about again? him? Yeah. What do you think about him yeah. <laughs> in general? <laughs> That's fine. Yeah. Just, just answer that. <laughs> this is great, guys. This, and, is, and bam, I'm gonna check something. this is great listening. Yeah. I mean, mean Delphin's going to try to fix his Wi-Fi. He's going to kill our connection. It's just going to be. <laughs> no, no, no. It's not going to kill the connection. If anything, but, he drops and we we and then we keep going. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he jumps Just in. Just talk about Last Jedi until I get back. Okay, cool. <laughs> oh no. Um, well, um, Ryan Johnson, um, you know, appeared on my radar when I heard of a movie called like Looper back in college. Uh, a friend of mine liked it. Like he was a. To be honest, I still haven't seen it. Um, I own the DVD oh. too. It's over there. Um, but he recommended it to me. He was a huge Ryan Johnson fan. That this was Heat, John. God damn it! Yeah, shit. Double feature. Heat and Looper. Heat and Looper. Andrew, we're doing this after this after this That's podcast. That's a good ass day. And, That's a good and Looper, ass man. Day. I remember watching Looper when I. Oh was no! At the what draft did I say? House. I said Looper. Did I, say, I meant Brick. That's what you I meant. Brick. I saw Brick. Oh, okay, I haven't yeah, seen yeah, Brick. Okay, I own Brick. Okay, but oh, that's what I I first heard of Ryan Johnson was in college. He. Um, a friend of mine um, who studied the same thing as he was like a, a huge Ryan Johnson, Johnson fan from a movie called Break, and he showed me the movie. Um, I never saw it, you know. I went out and bought it and stuff, and didn't actually like watch it, which is dumb. But I I like the fact that I can watch it. Like you know, I like the fact of having a copy of Joanna Man, you know, just in case I wanted to bust <laughs> that out or something. 
Um, just a backup Joanna. Yeah, exactly, man. exactly. You can just have that is ha- that is the note that Delphin. Returns yeah, exactly. To. Joanna Man had a uh, Ryan Johnson had an EP credit. On the hell? Joanna Man. That's no, 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 that's not PC anymore. Um, well, let's talk about yeah. Knives Out. Oh, wait, no, 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 sorry. Was saying, but Ryan Johnson is. Um, Hold on, John's talking about Joanna. Yeah, man. Joanna Man. Yeah, exactly. And how it relates to Ryan Johnson. No, um, but and then you know he made all this other stuff. You know he made Looper, which was amazing. Like you know you watching Looper is just a freaking great, such a, to me oddly quiet but very thrilling like sci-fi movie. Um, and then you know seeing the Ozymandias episode from Breaking Bad, which was probably the best episode of Breaking Bad. Like you know it's it's, like even watching it and then knowing that the guy from Looper directed this and then rewatching it again you're just like god damn it's wild and then you know he obviously went on to we have another podcast where we talk about this a lot but he went on to make a indie film you know a sci-fi indie film called Star Wars or something um, which was great i loved it and then knives out was like amazing i don't usually nobody had any problems with nobody it. had any problems with just with a perfect swing at the bat and everyone loved yeah, it yeah it was they shouldn't it was have kind any like, problems with it boom mm-hmm. It was a it was a quiet no, little uh, quiet little era where you just like oh he made a Star Wars cool, um, <laughs> but Knives Out came around and Knives Out I've never you know I had never been into a hard mystery whodunit type of like uh, movie before you know I you, I know you know they exist and stuff but you know I've never been um, I've never like you know I was never one to seek out like movies like that or like even books or fiction like that in general. Um, Unless you're playing, like, a murder mystery with, like, a person or something. You know, like, one of those, like, uh, hunt a killer or something. Those are really fun. Like, when you when you get to do the interaction yourself. But as watching the movies, they never kind of... Not in a bad way. It's just, like, it's never really kind of interests me. So, watching Knives Out and me being a, a, a fan of Ryan Johnson because of the last movie he just did before that. Um, and watching it and they ha- being completely thrown off by how funny it is. By how, like... How, like, um... You know how thrilling everything is. How like the amount of twists that you don't see coming. Like the this like what Brent was talking about. Like he's really good at subversion to where like you're like wait, I, holy crap! Like I didn't, I didn't know that was you know that was about to happen. Um, I love Knives Out, and so that's pretty awesome. When I heard that there was getting a he was getting a second one like on Netflix, I was a little worried because of the Netflix part. But watching it in theaters was like whoa! Like this is great. Like I, I think the day of I. Ch- I had to sleep on it because I don't think I was um, – and even then now, like, the feelings are are regurgitating. Um, I don't know if I was as impressed from, like, a spectacle point, like the way I was with Knives Out. But I think it, overall it was um, – I think looking back now, it's a definitely a funnier experience, funnier experience. And um, it's definitely a little bit more subversive than of the than – the thing you know then what you would expect to happen in a sequel to this movie yeah well let's get into it so knives out 2 is the i it's not even necessarily a sequel it's just another mystery set in the knives out universe mostly starring daniel craig uh at well really as the only returning piece from the original knives out as benoit blanc but it's a whole new cast of characters um, uh, Edward Norton plays billionaire Miles Braun. Janelle Monet plays Cassandra uh, or Andy Brand, um, uh, and Catherine Hahn as uh, the governor of Connecticut. Leslie Odom Jr. Uh, as Lionel Toussaint, who works at Miles's company. Kate Hudson as Bernie J, who's a former supermodel. Uh, Dave Bautista as Duke Cody, a Twitch streamer. Jessica Harwick is Peg Birdie's assistant. Madeline Klein as Whiskey, Duke's girlfriend. Uh, There's a whole bunch of other people in the cast, but it's important to go over it because this is definitely an ensemble piece, just like the first film, and you never know who done it. You forgot Hugh Grant and Ethan Hawke. There, yes, I mean Yo Yo Ma is in this too. Angela Lansbury, uh, um, and and, yeah, Stephen Sondheim. Final roles. Stephen. There's a lot of. There's a lot of. um, Yeah, I mean, we talked about the scale. The scale is higher, which means the 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 playing field of our characters are so really you know, where they're hanging out with these kinds of people. But Brent, what did you think of Knives? Oh, sorry, Glass Onion, a Knives Out mystery. I keep wanting to call it Knives Out too, but it's not. Yeah, um, I I love this movie. Uh, <clears throat> like the the more it's kind of sat with me, and I and I'm definitely gonna rewatch it on Netflix just to kind of like really because like Knives Out the first one um, isn't even to the level I think glass onion is in terms of like things the layers happening. Of the onion. The la- yeah, exactly. The layers that like, you're not really seeing live. It's like retroactively that you're catching stuff. 
Um, but even still, Knives Out, uh, the first one, is like a really, really rewarding rewatch. Like, it's a really good time rewatching that movie. And um, yeah, so I think uh, <laughs> I just saw oh, John's okay. message. Um, <laughs> uh, I think Glass Onion. Uh, to, I like it better than the first one. Like, I, I think it's. I think it's even more fun than the first one. I think the mystery is uh, more enjoyable to see played out, especially the structure in which, like the the movie kind of unfolds. I think is a lot of fun. Um, I think the cast is is uh, so good and, and so hilarious and like it's cool seeing like Kate Hudson like back in a movie and like kill it in a movie because it's just like man where, where's like Kate Hudson been uh, Janelle Monae and we're already saying spoiler shit so like Janelle Monae is like great in like a dual role um, she's like a, a she really uh, pops kind of similarly to Ana de Armas the first one. Um, mm-hmm. And, uh, and uh, yeah, like Ed Norton too. Ed Norton's like an actor. Uh, I like, I like loved growing up and, um, always like him when he's in stuff. And then he like, I don't know if he like took a sabbatical or what, but he just hasn't really been in much. And to I see him in incredible Hulk. And then that was it. Uh, yeah. I think and he then directed that, that movie. There was that direct, uh, he directed a oh, movie and yeah. he started yeah. it and it bombed hard. It was, it was really expensive. He changed the time period. Yeah, that's right. That was like the last thing. Um, but it's just so cool uh, to see these actors who I, I really enjoy in something like this that's so, <clears throat> you know, it's it's dealing with death in a sense, but, you know, um, it's still so funny and so playful. And again, this one, the ways in which it is modern um, – I think really, really uh, heightened my enjoyment of the movie, like in terms of the fact that it's set during COVID and like the whole joke with like the only thing they use Ethan Hawke for is to give them like a rich people antidote <laughs> to, to to fucking COVID was the funniest thing. Isn't Kid Blue? And, Kid uh, Blue's like Daryl or something. He's like, oh, he's just Daryl. He's just don't pay attention to him. He's like, oh, guys, oh, that's crazy. Yeah, he walks uh, here. I forget that guy's name. Yeah. Um, that's a Noah something, but, but like, yeah, he's like Noah he's, Segan. Yeah, Segan. I just know him as Kid yeah, Blue from Looper. Great. Yeah, they're just like, yeah, yeah. Um, God, it's hilarious and uh, so many fun cameos. Uh, yeah, Ed Norton basically playing Elon Musk, um, and seeing it in like the midst of his absolute catast- like mm-hmm. catastrophic Twitter takeover was so funny. Because it was just like, oh my gosh, this doofus. Um, so yeah, I loved Glass Onion. Uh, I'm going to rewatch it a bunch, I'm sure, over the years. And um, uh, yeah, seeing this, and I just want to say, like seeing this movie in a packed theater uh, with my mom and stepdad, who really liked the first one, was one of the best experiences of the year, man. The audience was like cracking up. Um, they were like, you know, shocked at a whole bunch of different moments. Um, yeah, really, really great time. Um, I guess, yeah, check it out on Netflix. That's your option now. It's Don't great. cancel that flicks. Don't cancel um, that flicks. <laughs> Drew, what do you think of Knives Out? Oh, sorry, Glass Onion, a Knives Out mystery. Um, I really loved uh, Glass uh, Onion. I thought it was really, really cool. Like the way Brent said, it was like super, it, it's definitely more layered. I remember texting you guys, like it's bigger on every scale from the first one. <laughs> Um, because you know, uh, it even like at one point, I think the world is in peril where it's like, this guy's going to put this combustible, um, you know, basically uh, energy source out into the world. and It's going to blow up the whole world. And I was like, Jesus Christ. Yeah, like, I didn't expect he's like a James, big. he's a James Bond villain. Oh yeah, yeah for sure. No, and no, 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 no um, I, I think it's cool because, uh, like Benoit Blanca obviously is, is, is us. So like what, he's the only one that asks what that COVID spray is and what it does. Everyone else is just, you know, rich, spoiled, whatever. Like, okay, like, you know, um, and that's the kind of world we're entering here is these uh, dis- dis- these snobby disruptors because of, the, you know, the, the, the rich people, rich, rich uh, you know, typical rich a- assholes type of uh, crowd. And each of them play a different one, which I think the COVID ad- adds to it based off of how they respond to that COVID um, mm. uh, basically threat. And, mm. uh, yeah, it, it's, it's just super clever and things like that. Uh, in ways like that and uh, I was trying to find something to compare it to and I think with this one the closest thing I could 
is to the Scream franchise, where the Scream franchise knows and is self-aware of its genre and it uses that to play into certain things that you think it'll go that way. And so by, by that means, you know, subverts you to um, uh, more of a, a shock or, an, you know, um, attention building or anticipation and stuff like that. So I think it's really cool that, you know, from the get-go, we're already looking at Catherine Hahn a little bit more, you know, suspicious or whatever. You know, everyone has their, their theories and stuff like that. So I think it's really cool that um, he writes and directs it in a way where he expects that from the audience. So um, it's just another level, I think, of, of, of writing and care. And um, I, man, I, I wish he would write more movies that other people can direct because I want to see if it's him that's making these movies great as, as a director, you know, or if it's him as the writer. But um, yeah, it, it's just kind of bonkers to see a, even a, a mass cast like this interact um, and so I, I hope that he never really shies away from something like this because, they, you know, if there was a, a one where it was only three people on an island and it was Benoit Blanc and two other people, it, I don't think it would be, it would have that same type of, um, feel to it. So, uh, I, and, but, you know, he, he's proved me wrong with, with something like this where I thought it was going to be more of the same. And, uh, I think he's, uh, it just makes me really excited to see anything else he, 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 he is going to do because Looper is, it's wild on how it's a sci-fi movie, um, that feels a little bit more small scale. And it's the same thing here where it's, it's very human problems, I think, but he, he finds a way to make it so interesting with, um, with basically our expectations, I think, uh, on what we're expecting to happen. Um, because, you know, even the fact that he's playing like the murder mystery game, uh, Ed Norton's character, where he's like, well, that's what we're playing today. And it's like the actual game. And I was like, man, it's super like meta in a sense where it just um, heightens, like, I guess, the, the premise of um, what these movies are and, and I guess can be. Yeah, for sure. He's so talented at that. And I'll save some of this for my review after John's. But the fact that the glass onion is supposed to be um, something that's like made out of glass, super layered, but you can always see just it's very simple. You can see exactly what it is. The The box that they give everyone is so layered, so complex, but you can just break it open like everything is, I love that. is and there's like a million versions of this in this movie and it's just a just a testament to what ryan uh does all the time uh john what do you think of glass onion and knives out mystery uh yeah like i said earlier um i was a little weirded out i'm still kind of thinking in terms of it's so weird so it's like I, I feel like i'm giving like half-assed thoughts here because i was like i needed to watch this this movie i enjoyed a lot and i was like i need to watch this again <laughs> and i didn't get the chance to i meant to watch it twice in theaters but like my, I guess my first reactions of the movie was like, um, like I said, walking out was was okay. Like I didn't know if I liked it or not. I, it's a I, different. I didn't like experience. it. Yeah, I was like, it's. I think maybe it's that's what it was. I think I was like maybe just. Um, it was very different, and um, I guess in this case I can applaud that. That was really awesome. Um, the scope is definitely bigger. Um, I'm not sure if I enjoyed it the way I did with. The, the way the first movie was, but I did enjoy, I think I'm in terms of like cast um, and seeing how the wild combinations, like, you know, Jess Henwick with, uh, you know, being paired up with like Kate Hudson is, is, is cool. And, you know, um, you know, Dave Bautista just talking to Norton and uh, Odom Jr. And, you know, and Han just like, you know, casually like that. And it's just like, it, it, it's amazing, you know, just to see on screen. Um, and then everybody, everyone there, like, did acted their heart out. Like, you know, they're all, you know, it's obviously like a comedy movie, but everyone's having fun. Like, you know, Batista is really funny when it comes to, um, you know, casting him in comedic roles. I'm not just talking about Drax, but, you know, if you watch, like, you know, what we do in the shadows or some of his other stuff, like, he's pretty, he's, he's, he's got chops. Um, and then the, as for the mystery itself, like, whoa, like, it did definitely keep me on my toes. I think it definitely had more, like, um, twists in the first one. I was very surprised by every single one. Um, and, um, I don't know how to take the ending. The ending to me was a little melancholy, but I did, I mean, I, I guess they do leave hope that like, uh, you know, old, um, I forgot his name, Miles, I think that's what, um, his, he plays, like Norton plays the yeah, guy named the billionaire. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's going to get his. So it's just like, it's, um, I mean, I guess it is kind of like a happy ending and stuff, but, you know, just hanging with Blanc again and having him like kind of the moments I think in this movie are the things that like, 
like sell it for me like you know where he's talking about no when he first like you know like the moments where he does the uh <laughs> he figures out the mystery mystery game immediately oh that was the best it's the best you don't oh, see that so na- funny i mean but you don't see that until after you watch the movie where you're kind of like oh he's doing this so that she can have more time to stall like so um i don't know what her name is andy it's not plus, andy it's the other one the uh plus he's so good at what he does he's so confident he'll figure it he'll out figure right? it out yeah yeah, and so like that's that was amazing, and there, or like you know the the realization he has when he kills he killed Batista like the streamer character with pineapple juice, and he's like it's so yeah. dumb, and he's like it's so dumb, it's brilliant. And he's like no, it's just dumb, <laughs> <laughs> and that's just like one of the best. Like I don't know, it's just like those moments like that, like it, the big comedic moments. Like I didn't see it in a full theater. It, mine was pretty packed, but it wasn't like pretty full. It wasn't like really full, but moments like. The genuine fun moments of those movies, like, really had the crowd hollering. Um, and so that's that's wild. Like, you don't really get, like, a... I guess that's what I guess that's what's, what's awesome the second time around for Glass Onion is, like, like Knives Out, like, this movie is really fun. Like, it, it's got an aura of, like, everyone's kind of... I mean, the actor is obviously having all this fun. The tone isn't very dark. Like, it, it will get there if it needs to be, but it's, like, pretty whimsical. Um... And I love that about this movie. Like, I don't, I don't know what if I've never seen the movie Clue, which everyone always, com- you know, whenever I, I saw Knives Out, I would, you know, I would get asked. I was like, it's on Amazon, I think. Amazon Prime. Yeah, and it's also a game, yeah. which, you know, I've never played either. It's true. Um, you can order it on Amazon Prime. But, um, <laughs> like, having, like, a really just bright, like, whodunit movie that's, like, like, just, like, really fun to watch. And overall, at the very end, being like a what? Like, was that really, like, the movie? <laughs> Um, it's wild to have that, and like it's it's. I'm in all of R- Johnson's ability to do this, especially since he seems like a really down to earth, like really caring guy. It, he kind of almost seems a little like, I don't know, like almost like we were talking about James Gunn before we started recording, but like he spends a lot of t- time online too. I'm just kind of worried. I'm wondering how you know those any of those fuckers get their work done because they're like just doing this or like, oh, you know, a tweet about like you know, oh, I you know opened a bottle yesterday and watched this and was like, Hey, shouldn't you be working on my next star Wars? You motherfucker. What are you doing? Just watching this <laughs> anyway, but uh, jokes aside, I mean, I love the movie. It's great. I can't wait to watch it again uh, later this month on Netflix. Yeah. I, 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 I enjoyed this movie. I think I just like you, John, I think I, I would say like 30 minutes in, you do get that. This is a different mm-hmm. type of movie. You know, I think that uh, to, I think uh, his credit, he did not want to redo knives out. And I feel like, there's definitely a lot more that he wants to say in this movie. I know we're kind of drawing some parallels with Elon Musk, but you know, this was happening during the Trump administration too, with like the height of the cult of personality surrounding yourselves with yes men while you don't know actually anything. Mm-hmm. And I feel like this movie takes such a poignant attack at that. And it's done in a very, very, very fun way, even showing kind of what it's like to be trapped when you're with someone like that, like Catherine Hahn's character, Batista's character, um, Leslie Odom Jr., everyone is trapped. And it's not so much that they're just all awful people, but they're awful because they can't, you know, <laughs> wean themselves off of this horrible billionaire. And I think that that's something that makes the movie, if not just as personal, at least a little bit like the first knives out in that way is we still care for these people, even though one's like a governor, you know, and not necessarily all in a family, but very different. I mean, the crime hasn't even happened. Well, one murder has happened, I guess, uh, spoiler alert (laughs) already, but you know, we're introduced to this world, you know, and a, and a crime happens halfway through it. And then another one happens, you know, halfway through it. And I think it's just really fun to show him have, have a uh, just the ability to move things around, and I think what's interesting when you hear Ryan Johnson talk is it's very mechanical. It's like if it's like if a, 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 a like a mechanic was fixing a car. Like it's not very well. I wonder what would happen if we did this. It's very meticulous the way that he put the movie together. I think you talked about that scene where Benoit is like frustrated at the end and be like, "It's so stupid. It was so easy." That 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 monologue is the exact same tempo and the exact same words as the Edward Norton monologue when he talks about why the disruptors are important. If you watch it again and you're like, man, these two things are, he's literally taking Norton's monologue and destroying it in his, 
I don't know, deconstruction of it, you know, towards the end. And I thought that was like really, really uh, something that's really great. And I'm not, I got, maybe I have to watch the first one, but there's a whole lot of recontextualizing that happens mm -hmm. in this. Yeah. And it's all happening like everywhere. Uh, and, you know, there are some moments, of course, where it, it is so big, like the introduction of Clear, like Drew said, they're about to blow up the planet where you're just like, whoa, this world is... <laughs> insane like they're that like benoit blanc is a superhero this is a mcu movie um you know towards the end and then and then like the MacGuffin of the napkin that they find that he lights on fire and then you're just like oh shit um and you know the mona lisa is destroyed in this it's his his car's on his roof like there's a lot yes. in this movie <laughs> that completely turns like the game on its head yeah for sure it is not a small quiet movie and you know, I think it's 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 a testament to where I guess this form can go because we've you know there's a lot of like uh, it's not as fun. It's an Altman movie. Gosford Park is kind of a murder mystery, but it's very like it's set in a giant castle upstairs, downstairs type you know class thing going on. It's but it's very yeah. like calm and collected, I, and we've I seen a lot of those. A, a trailer just came out for Christian Bale's murder mystery where he plays Edgar Allan Poe or something like that. Oh my goodness. Okay. Yeah, it, it's what I'm saying. Like, we've seen a lot of those. We've never seen a murder mystery set on a private island in a giant glass onion with, uh, <laughs> you know, insane billionaire. So I appreciate that. It's like that. And honestly, it's not that heavy handed with the satire. I know there's a lot of satire in this. It's actually like dripping with it everyone's an archetype there's even Paul there's a politician you know it's like wild there's QAnon maybe um but it's still not like it, my theater is definitely not full of uh super progressive people you know we had some I'm sure it like spanned a pretty general demographic and everyone enjoyed it because even if you're like not there for that message you're still enjoying the mm -hmm. fact that there is so many red herrings thrown at you, so many clues that maybe aren't, clues for other things, clues for the fake dinner party, but not for the actual crime, that at a certain point, you're just not, you're not trying to figure it out, you know? Like, because even if you guessed, spoiler alert, who the bad guy was, you know, you still would have never guessed in a million years how you get to how that you, end. Yeah, totally, because like, I think you... Yeah. You can still pick, like, oh, he's the bad guy. Yeah, I mean... But yeah. fine, that didn't do you anything, because there's a million things that happened between everyone finding we out. We knew that, that the bad guy was Norton, like, you know, yeah. immediately, well, like, right? Like, I think whenever the clues started trickling in, you're just like, oh, yeah, that's him. But You I, don't like him. I guess, at, at the very least, you don't like well, him. Well, I think not even when you don't like him. I think it's like when the... when the switch happens like kind of almost immediately. You're like, Oh, that's the mm. killer. But again, it's just like, it's getting to that. The reason and the context is still like very exciting, which is, I think maybe that's why I may have like, you know, or, or at least like given the impression that I didn't enjoy it or something. Cause like, I think when the initial twist happened where it was like, it was not revealed to be uh Andy or whatever. It was revealed to be the other character. The it was, uh, Helen, 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 Helen. Okay. um, I think in my head, I kind of knew. I was like, "Oh, it's it's Norton's character." I was like, "It's definitely." I was like, "That's who he's trying to kill." But like, I didn't. I still didn't anticipate all the shit that would happen when you got all that info, like kind of given to you at the very end. Like, there was still more shit to happen. Yeah, and I think that's what makes this movie really special is that he he kind of like a little bit with the first Knives Out too. Is he kind of removes the kind of like who did it from being this huge specter that's like true, over yeah. everything. And he like throws Showed so it. many other things at you mm. that by the time it was like revealed in glass onion, that it was, that it was Edward Norton. It's not even, I don't think it's even played for this like huge, like what moment? Because it's like, there's so many other elements. Uh, it's, it's, it's like the how and the why are so much more interesting to him than like who it's like, how did we get there? Like what, what took place to like have this happen? You know? And even like then when you do find out about it, it's like everybody's done it. If you're all complicit and you're like, yeah. Holy shit, like I, there, it's not even a yeah, who done it. Like, like everyone that. did it. And it's the same thing when like, Blanc like it's like I can't do anything like we have no proof and so it's almost yeah. like he gets away with it where it's like holy shit like that's such a big turn of events that if no one said anything then he could have gotten away with murder like literally because a, of how he, he flips it on his head here 
And it's really poignant because at a certain position of power, like where Miles was, you you probably are immune to everything, you know? And it's, I think that's what's really interesting is it's a murder mystery. You care about who did it. But then the next level is, will they even get in trouble? And is this even about them more so than all of the ensemble finally <laughs> growing some balls and like, you know, uh, yeah. turning on him and, and, and like standing for themselves. At, at first, you don't even know whose murder you're fucking, if the mystery yeah. is like you, you go through like half the movie and you're like, oh, shit, like the murder didn't even happen on screen. Yeah. And I think yeah. I, I noticed this kind of tonal shift from like caring about who the bad guy is when Batista's character, we get the recontextualization of his scene. Like we just think that he, you know, his girlfriend is sleeping Cheating. with the billionaire and you just think it's like face level. Oh, like, you know, that's just a reason for him to be upset. But he kind of is a tragic dude, yeah. you know, and is like going downhill and he really needs this for miles. And he has the Google or and you're just like, oh, my gosh, like it's more about all of these other people than even the murderer because we. Just like the glass onion, we knew who he was kind of the whole, the whole time. time yeah. And mm-hmm. that's what's really fun about the movie is it's a murder mystery that gets people in the seats, but it's kind of not. <laughs> like and it, it's more about whether this guy's actually going to be able to get in trouble. All right, we're going to play a quick game. Whoa. And we'll, what? Uh, that's what? a surprise, usually on virtual ones. So. It's a fun little subversive twist yeah, here. Yeah, exactly. Nice. Little of our exactly. Glass onion. Guess yeah. what? You're going to have to listen to this episode from part one his, because the game started when you got in this Zoom. His Wi Fi oh, wasn't oh. actually acting up. He was like this and then like, <laughs> like yeah. riding My Wi Fi wasn't acting up. I was running to your houses and planting <gasps> clues. There's a box on my couch. That's right. He Open ran it up. My door's locked. <laughs> it's a severed squirrel's head. Oh, what does that mean? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, uh, Here's what this is. It's pretty simple. We've got a chat that's open in uh, StreamYard. I'm going Mm -hmm. to say a riddle because knives out, glass onion, filled with riddles and clues. I'm going to just say simple riddles. And the first person, and if not the only person, to guess the riddle correctly will have a point. I have 642 riddles. I'm just kidding. No, there was a big list of them, but I chose like a couple. Um, does that make sense? Does anyone have any we, questions? We just have to solve it first one to get it right. First person to solve the riddle. Oh, yeah. So We're a lot of these Batmaning are... Batmaning it up right now. Bum, yeah. Bum, and, bum, and, bum, yeah. Bum. Call me the Riddler. <laughs> 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 or actually, that's not the new Riddler, right? New Riddler. Yeah. He goes, he goes, <laughs> hey, hey. <laughs> wow, the fuck, the freaking range in Wait, Batman. We're gonna, you can have Jim get... Carrey, and you've got like Incel dude as the same character. <laughs> yeah, wow. new Riddler. What we're gonna get like raided by a bunch of Twitch streamers, yeah. like <laughs> hurling like death. Threats can you imagine the director is like, can I just split the difference and have someone in between? Yeah, go, know, go to go to your new workout thing. fuel and use the uh, the checkout code Riddler for twenty percent off. <laughs> <laughs> oh <my gosh>. yeah. <laughs> your testosterone. Okay, here we go. Here's a riddle number one. What has to be broken before you can use it? What has to be broken before you can use it? The winner will get the Benoit Blanc prize of, you know what? You'll get a regular onion. You won't get a glass onion. You'll get, these are some good horses. What, this is some good guesses. I'm not at a rodeo yelling at the this lifestyle. is a horse of many. These are some good horses. A man of I many horses. J- John's is objectively right, but I don't know. I don't if know if that's like, oh, John, I don't know if that's okay. the actual answer John, you were thinking of. But I was like, mm. it's not. But I can see how you all are 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 right answering, and and you're in the right mindset. No one got it right. Ah. Uh, John guessed a glow stick, which is technically true, I guess. <laughs> Brent said a horse, which is yes, you have to break a horse. Well, not like physically, but yeah, you have to. And then Drew said trust. And that's like, I don't think you have to break trust. <laughs> um, the answer was an egg. Mm, yeah, okay. So we're gonna... Well, not how I eat eggs. What the hell? You're swallowing <laughs> eggs like a snake? Wait, here, wait, we're talking eggs again. I forgot what pot it was. We fucking <laughs> went deep on eating eggs. Oh, yeah. It was, oh, that it was, was a right. Star Wars. Or, no, oh, it could have been, yeah, off pot, actually. It's probably Here's an no, odd thing. We talk about eggs. It's just so funny because I think, part, like, after that, the day afterwards, I told Drew, I was like, hey, dude, you're not supposed to eat. He's like, I don't eat eggs every day, so I'm just going to yeah, eat three. You know, like, yeah. He's like, that was I was like I'm going to eat three eggs, and that's three eggs for the week, and that's it. Yeah, you can't. It's it's an average. I eat so many fucking eggs. On average, yeah. you can't eat, 
like generally two a day. Um, Are you the egg I police? This. Yeah, I am egg police. I'm EPD. Oh, okay, here fuck. we go. Here's the next one. <laughs> get on the ground. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> I'm going to go to your fridge and see how many. Uh, fuck, it's all eggs. It's all <laughs> I got. Your fridge is only eggs, you fucking sick fuck. <laughs> You're the Riddler of eggs. Okay, here's the next one. I'm tall when I'm young, and I'm short when I'm old. What am I? I'm tall when I'm young, and I'm short when I'm old. What am I? I gotta have like a I gotta have a Riddler, um, like giggle in my drops. Just a hee 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 hee. Wait, repeat like it. A little. A what? Repeat it. Uh, I'm tall when I'm young, and I'm short when I'm old. I'm what tall am I? when I'm young, I'm short when I'm old. I don't know, man. Yeah, I have uh, no clue. Damn it, Brent actually stole, I was going to say a drink, yeah. All right. Um, John, your, your screen name is throwing me off. Um, John said, Grandpa. Brent said, glass of water, and Drew said, drink. And no one got to write the answer. A candle. Ah, okay. Mm. But fuck, these are hard riddles. Like, Shit. what the fuck is going on? Wait. These are well, literally. I don't, I don't think anybody's gonna win. How does like this is literally from this is from an article called "A Hundred and One uh, Riddles for Kids." I don't know if I understand the candle thing. I'm looking at a candle. <laughs> He's looking at a candle. It's like, what kind of candle is it? First of all, if it's a sensi, it's not gonna change. It's, it's not plastic. tall. It's like a <laughs> candle. The same height. It's okay. one of those candles that have Jesus. Is it all wax? Or, you know, like oh. that, like. Short when nope. you're young? Wait, I'm tall no, when I'm, I'm young. young and short when I'm old. Fresh candle, light it. Oh, as it, oh I mixed them up. I mean, okay, Grandpa yeah. can still take the cage. John, you know? Grandpa, my, my, what happened? my Grandpa grew. When, <laughs> no, no, yeah, when a, a Grandpa's young, he's not a Grandpa. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> that's a Benjamin Button ass That's shit. what's wild, though, because like I've always... Tall-ass baby. <laughs> but I've always known him as Grandpa, so to me, when he's young or old, he's just going to be Grandpa. That's interesting. Um, here's the next one. What is full of holes but still holds water? Remember, these are riddles for kids. Jesus. What is full of holes but still holds water? Man, we keep talking about water and getting wet and shit. Does Batman Dang. fucking solve these fuckers? No wonder he hates the Riddler. He's probably just been like, I'm tired of this shit. I need to go beat oh my the gosh. fuck out of him. Okay, I'm not even joking. Sophia's next door. She heard me. She answered it correctly. Oh, tell her to answer. She just texted it to me. Oh, she fucking say, hot shot. Tell her to answer wow. it out yeah, loud. Tell her to yell yeah. it again. Here's what I'll say. This is for kids, so I'm sure she's a teacher. She has this no- is biased. Yeah, yeah. It's just like. She's a- and honestly, that's egg on your face. That's whole egg on your face. It, it holds water. Is that what you said? It holds water. Hold on. He's like, stop saying the fucking <laughs> answer. <laughs> He's gonna go get, get mad at her. Hey. Stop yelling the fucking answer. <laughs> okay, you ready? Wow, Brent, that's an interesting one. Oh, and Fia just texted, I'm just fucking smart. Okay. Well, All right, here we go. Wait, who's smart? Wow, who's smart and why is she fucking him? Um, Brent guessed a hose. John guessed a water bottle. Drew guessed pool. All of them pretty close. The answer was a sponge. Mm. That's very, oh, okay, wow. that's very literal. So these definitely are some, like, kid-ass fucking... These are riddles. riddles. Yeah, I think we're putting too much deep meaning fucking behind kid I know. <laughs> Drew's like, trust. I don't know, that sponge... Break my trust. <laughs> that sponge one is just like, oh, okay, it makes sense now, but I was I don't think I would have ever yeah. gotten it. Like, Okay, here's another one. What question can you never answer yes to? Okay, hold on. This is oh, not shit. dirty, just so everyone knows. Yes, okay, yeah. These are for kids. Uh, what question can you never answer yes to? Don't get too far down the rabbit hole. Either. Oh God, like, I'm going don't. deep. Well, that's the thing. Like, like, do double I'm negatives. Lost. Like, <laughs> what? What? What have you not yet? Yes, done. <laughs> don't think of like a crazy question that I guess would be correct. Um, what question can you never answer yes to? I don't know. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> John, that is some low T answer that you just said. <laughs> um, Drew, Drew guessed how old are you? Yeah, how old you are, or like an age? I you guess you can't age? say yes. Yeah, you know what? There's a lot of questions you can't say. Yeah, like, 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 okay. Like, okay. John guessed, do you want to fight? And Brent asked, how do you say no? That that's tripping me out. <laughs> I should have. Damn. Hey, bro, pass the. You got that gummy in you? <laughs> 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 Here's the kid answer. Are you asleep? 
Ah. Fuck. <laughs> Damn it. All right. Well, maybe next score wins. Um, <laughs> I was about to say, always, Noah's going to get this. What is always in front of you but can't be seen? Remember, this is for kids, so you can't say that ass. <laughs> um, what is always in front of you but can't be seen? Why would you say that? Also, wait, why can't you see? Okay, maybe a blind person's ass? Yeah, my friend, you got me. What is in always in front of you but can't be seen? I have what seen my mirrors eyes. mirrors exist. God damn it. <laughs> Brent. Fucking Drew. Fucking shit. mirrors, bro. Drew? You get the first point because the answer is the best. And the next oh, score wins, bitch. Drew won. Do y'all want a couple no, more? Let's do, let's do a couple more. Fuck it. Might as well. More. Yeah. We'll do a couple I, more. I, I, I highly doubt. I think Drew's going to win with one. Here we go. <laughs> Alas. Yeah, I know. Um, okay. I have, there's a lot of them. Fuck. The, is the um, whole game a riddle? Yeah. Did we all win? Yeah. What was the first letter of each of the answers? They spell something dirty. You and all. Okay. What is so <laughs> fragile that even saying its name breaks it? It's not an egg. What is so fragile that uh, saying its name was... breaks it? So fragile that <laughs> says its name breaks it. I should have done like 50 riddles and the answer was egg. That would have been much funnier. Drew. Is just it so? Drew, another done. point. Silence. The answer is oh ant silence. God. You cannot. Are you Googling this it's shit so on my computer? Drew's got his fucking oh. riddle book open on his desk yeah. over there. <laughs> okay, here. this one's a little harder. What can travel all around the world without leaving its corner? What can travel around the world without leaving its corner? Drew's like freaking Benoit blanking over here. I know, he's, he's like blanking. You see how like low quality is like on fucking real player from like Macintosh computers over there and shit? Like it's fucking wild. <laughs> oh yeah, his, he's like super his, blurry. Yeah, his internet internet is over here. <laughs> That's just because Drew's thinking so hard the electromagnetic waves are breaking things. He's Wait, he's like a uh, Was I Patrick right with my globe Stewart. answer? No. Oh, Drew shit. said globe. A globe doesn't have corners, but flat earth. Yeah, does. Flat, a flat earth globe. Like a, a cube. A flat earth globe. <laughs> That's... What I did is I bought a globe, I cut it in half, and I li I stomped on it. And that Meyer. Uh Brent said shadows. I'm just going to tell you the answer. Yeah, go for it. I don't know. It's a stamp. Uh... A stamp on a letter. All right, Drew, congratulations yeah, for being the that's smartest good. one. Um, how you get that smart? Boy, how you get that smart? How do you get that smart? Okay. Uh, let's talk a little <laughs> bit more about Glass Onion and Knives Out Mystery. Any other big, like, there's so many fun sequences. I think one of the things that kind of disarmed me to kind of tell me this was like going to be a kind of a different movie was the beginning when they all get the box and they're kind of disparate characters and they start calling each other. Then we get a little, little De Palma, uh, Soderbergh split screen going on. And it's not like, it's not boring either <laughs> the screen's freaking like doing loops and crap you know yeah. you got all these people answering but any other big like moments that really stood out to you i think the uh the fake out death in the middle of the movie f mm. uh was that was like something that it was one of those twists where i guess like it's it's one of the twists we talked about where it's just like i holy shit and then for the twist to be on that twist like it's hot sauce in a fucking journal like, that was yeah. wild to me. I'm just like, I don't know where this is going. And like, I don't know where this is going. Whose hot sauce was it? It's Jeremy Renner's hot sauce, which is pretty cool. Mm -hmm. And they had Jared oh, Leto's uh, hard kombucha, which I was trying to get oh, a yeah. copy of. Or I was trying to get a bottle <laughs> of for this, funny. but we don't. Yeah, we couldn't find one. And she got, like, there. wasted on it, right? Yeah. Hard kombucha. Leto doesn't mess around. Oh, uh, dude, just the, the way that yeah, go for it, Craig sorry. pronounces that, just like. Jared Leto's hard kombucha. Yeah. That's hard kombucha. Shit. That's just not any hard kombucha. That's Jared Leto's hard kombucha. In <laughs> yeah. <there. laughs> so, God, dude, Daniel Craig is such a treasure. I really wish um, they would have yeah. let, like, Ryan Johnson had an idea to have Benoit Blanc have a different accent every movie. And that would have been hilarious. Like, because it just would have been an inexplicable. Unexplained. Yeah, unexplained that he just has a different accent every movie. I kind of wish he would have done that. But anyway, back to the, the sequences or like the things that stand out. That was probably maybe the first. No, no, no. The second twist, definitely. That I was like, kind of like, I, I don't know where this is going. And then for it to be peppered with comedy too, like the hot sauce in the eyes, like just so he can, oh, <laughs> so he yeah. can feel oh, the, tension. the tension. Yeah. And then like where it's just like, 
it's dripping down. Like, I like it when Benoit Blanc does it, too, because he says something, like, funny. He's like, ah, that's hella hot or something. Like, something corny and stupid. <laughs> yeah. And then, like, it goes into her high and she repeats the line. She's like, ah, that's hella hot. And then just, like, runs off. Um, oh, when it's great, great sequence. Yeah, when it's your nose. Not, oh. not her eye, yeah. That's right. Yeah, I <laughs> yeah. think uh, it's a little moment. I was going to say the end, but, like, we can talk about the end, uh, all of us. But um, I think the little <laughs> – the, the cameos are a lot of fun, and there's, like, a good amount of cameos. But the one that got me was fucking Hugh Grant. I, it mm. was just so out of, like, left field um, and so funny that that's who is, like, revealed to be I guess, his roommate or his boyfriend or husband or whatever. Um, I, I just love seeing very that. Very different things. They all are, but we don't know. I mean, his bro know. or his, his husband. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, whoever uh, he is to Benoit. Um, it was just like, oh fucking Hugh Grant's popping up in this. Um, uh, yeah, that scene just, just my audience just like cracked up when, when we all saw that it was fucking Hugh Grant. Um, and yeah, and then the ending. I think the ending is like uh, kind of amazing, like a great like fuck the rich, tear down, you know, uh, the, the systems of power moment of like. Literally like shattering everything in the room. Yeah, yeah, it's so good. And then uh, just the way the way that he's able to have like this whole system for the Mona Lisa painting, this but, like sci-fi fucking shit in the house that we know is dangerous. And we just, we like accept that going into the finale mm-hmm. and then all of it like pays off beautifully. Yeah. Um, and the fact yeah. that it is his ego and his the yeah. thing that he's like, you know, they want me to do all this, but I got to have a back. Like I have to have a loophole because that's, what I do. That's what like, you know, that's what uh, people who think there are no rules do is, you know, make up their own. And it's his downfall really is his weakness. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and the, the scene at the bar with uh, Edward Norton dressed as um, Tom Joe Cruise and Magnolia. Yeah. Did you, oh, anybody yeah. else piece that together? I, that? I saw that and I love it because it, because he's such a non-original dude, he's dressed up as Steve Jobs at mm-hmm. one point. He's just dressed up yeah. as those other people. And of course yeah, yeah. you would see Magnolia yeah. and be like, dude, this guy, this guy's fucking cool. Like I'm going to yeah. dress he's up. He's so influenced and full of nothing. Yeah. Ex- yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, but. Uh, like me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I think some of my favorite parts were uh, aesthetic uh, sequences where it was small things like the <laughs> the the time gong uh, voiced by Joseph Gordon Lovett yeah. was fucking oh, killed me. Yeah. Every time the hour oh, went, you were like, gong. I didn't know that. Like, That's that hilarious. So yeah, funny. Joseph Gordon Lovett was the voice. Of that. I re- I looked that up, and then when I looked that up, I laughed because I was like, "That's fucking." <laughs> I think it, it, yeah. it, it, That's even so... sillier than his last Jedi cameo. Oh, yeah, God. yeah. And so it's just I like because it happens. That... Doesn't it happen again during a serious part? He's like, "It's just the gong." <laughs> like the hour really gong. You know, it, it keep it keeps happening, and so like it, it, throughout the background, if you pay attention, it's happening. And so um, I love that, and it makes me laugh every time I fucking hear it. Um, and it's so funny because that would be something some rich person does instead of looking at their phone, just having a fucking big ass bell ring at the top of yeah. your your island or whatever. But um, I love that. And then I think my favorite, uh, one of my favorite parts is probably a visual sequence of when um, the lights turn off and everyone's running and it's intercutting mm. between where they're going and the camera's following everybody and it follows one person to the next and stuff like that. I think visually, especially with that lighthouse in the middle where the light keeps kind of flashing on everybody and checking in on them and, oh my God, the gun's gone and like everyone's trying to run away from each other. Oh my God, which one to use the killer? Um, I love that sequence a lot. They revisit it a little bit um, the second time when you get to see Ed Norton kill, you know, sh- try to kill. What's happening, um, yeah. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I love, I remember watching that sequence visually and my jaw just dropping. And to be honest, you know, uh, these movies do that a lot where I'm just like, no fucking way. Yeah. Um, it's, whether that's story wise or a visual sequence. Um, I think, uh, the first one had a lot, uh, did that a lot to me too, where I was like, holy crap, I can't believe this is it. And it's the same thing here where at the end of this movie, I was just kind of shocked of what I saw and you know it, it's just it's nothing crazy like it's not a big movie you know a blockbuster it's not a Marvel movie with the big CGI ending or whatever and so it's just kind of wild um, for him to make me feel that way um, with with something like this yeah and I think that that moment is one of my favorites too because it's a, such a big crescendo 
of the chaos of what just happened to, and I think there's a scene specifically where Ben Juan's looking up at every major player and it just like slowly pans all the way around. Cause you're like, who done it? And you know, on a huge credit to Nathan Johnson, I think is Ryan's brother who does the music because just like the first knives out, it's such a critical part of this whole uh, movie. It's, you know, it's light. It's funny. He's able to do things with motifs that, that add to humor. But in that moment specifically, the music's blaring. You know, everyone's like Daniel Craig's like just aghast because someone got killed. Like, it's just bonkers. And and then suddenly he's like, oh, but I'm just resetting it. Like, you know, this is all so that I can reset it <laughs> and you can, you know, we can get back to this, this thing. And I think that's, what's, that's always the hardest part about these movies um, is that, you know, I think everyone, I mean, most people can form maybe a murder mystery, you know, like, you know, I can write a story where Brent's the killer and work backwards. Murder on the Orient Express. I, well, yeah, that was a little, <laughs> that was a little wild, that's but a, yeah, I was like, that's uh, archetypal. Like, I'm I think talking about the, I'm talking there's, about the there's a, con- yeah. there's a conventional way of writing a whole, a, a, a murder mystery where you, all you care about is who did it. And then there's a, there's something else that Brian Johnson's doing where it, like we talked about, it almost doesn't matter because there are so many other things you need to worry about. Like, where's the napkin? Mm-hmm. Are people even going to believe that he killed him? Like all that stuff is happening you know, there. And I feel like that crescendo in the middle is sort of the height of like the conventional murder mystery part before he almost takes you into a different movie Mm -hmm. after revealing who Janelle Monet actually is. And that is like, honestly, that's just crazy. That's like wild work that you're like, how do you even start with something like that? You know, it's just, it's, it's baffling. Yeah, and uh, I think the stuff he does visually too, with like the the mystery elements, is really cool. Because I actually I actually did catch Edward Norton like shuffle the glass around, and I was like, "Wait!" I like watched his hand. Like, is the, something gonna ca- is something gonna we happen? Sort of made a point of giving him the thing, so you're just like, "Wait!" I well, don't know what that is. Yeah. To be honest, yeah. it's, it's so crazy because I think he even plays with you because there's a scene where Catherine Hahn accidentally trips and falls into Dave Bautista's character. Yeah. So it looks like she slips something into his drink. Or and takes so the phone like, well, or so, does something. Yeah. yeah. When it yeah. happened, I was like, why did she trip? And like, why did she touch him? And so as soon as he drinks it, I was like, oh, it's Catherine Hahn. But he knows that you're looking for stuff like that. So he plays with you that way. Yeah. yeah. And you do that enough. It's I like a smoke screen. I didn't catch you, any of that. You know, so as like, audience. I'm, I'm like really excited to watch the movie again because I didn't catch any of yeah. that shit. Well, it's, it's for like, for most people, they're trying to figure it out. But yeah, if there's like 10 red herrings then you almost don't even question which one is the real Man, watching one. this. And then it, and then it, it, it goes back to just being the guy who you thought it was. In the yeah. In the place. first place. I would say like, I think watching the third, if a third one comes about, like it's going to be almost like a little exhausting before you get past like the first 20 minutes. I feel like you're, everyone's going to be just trying to like freaking yeah. piece together shit. That's a movie that you're going to watch <laughs> on pause. Well, who yeah, haven't exactly. we been introduced <laughs> to that is going to change this entire movie. I, it's like new character. Uh-huh. It's a good point, and I guess we can talk about it a little bit. There is a there's a third one. There's another one Maybe. being made. You know, uh, well, nothing in this day and age is unless, like ever. Unless something bad unless they happens. just want to give him the two hundred million and walk away with it, I guess, but not get a movie out of it. But it would be interesting to know how he how how different it could be because it seems like he's making them fairly you know separate from each other. Not only in terms of the cast, but just tonally. And in scope, um, yeah, it is. It'll be interesting to see what third one is. Is it going to be smaller? Because I can't imagine it getting much bigger. But you know, Fast and Furious always teaches us. You know what I think is bigger. There's always bigger. You know what I think he's going to do? I think Knives Out Three is going to be his first, or I'm not first, but his new Star Wars entry. Oh and inexplicably, God. Benoit Blanc is going to be on like a space station. How fun would that be? That'd be really if cool. If he was just That's suddenly true. in Star Wars. Well, and I, I can see I could see like the third one being like Benoit Blanc's first case when he was a younger cat or something like Prequel. that, you know? Or maybe yeah. he's the target. Irish man him. He's not the target. Maybe he's oh. like he's always been like well, a like a like a like a like a player who comes in and kind of like observe like a almost like a like a council or something. And so like the third one to make yeah. it different consultant would be of. yeah, exactly. Uh he would 
having him as the centerpiece would be technically different yeah. than these than these other movies. I mean, to Brand's credit, introducing Hugh Grant means that he has um, people he cares like about. Life, yeah, outside of this stuff. Yeah. You can't, you know, this time it's personal. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, and I was going to say, too, they've referenced a prior case yeah. in each movie, and I couldn't remember if it was the same case. It's not. Like someone, but, okay, it's not. Okay, but a part of me yeah. thinks this is just Ryan Johnson having fun, too. Like, let's talk about this insane thing and never explain it. You yeah, know? yeah, like, that's probably what it we is. We could also, like, yeah, let's, I mean, yeah, yeah, finding the queen's crown or whatever and just not I mean, he talk could, about uh, it. Uh, he, he can turn this into, like, a Hercule Poirot story. Like we said, like, earlier, where it could just go on for, like, you know, the case that he references here could be, like, a fucking novel or something if Johnson gets bored one yeah. day, you know? When I can imagine him doing something wild, like putting the the cast of the first two together in the sec in the third one, being like, "Oh, we're gonna write a book about his yeah. cases and stuff like that," and then suddenly one of them dies again, and he's like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> like, it's <laughs> Jesus Christ! Like, like we were here, to like to yeah. you know something, and the, something and the, meta. The social footprint of this movie is going to be kind of interesting to escape because we're talking about the billionaire who created something called Alpha, which is this you know probably a giant conglomerate that's everywhere and i don't know how you like avoid that you know in the and if there's a follow-up story that like hey the biggest company in the world the guy almost blew up everyone and destroyed them <laughs> and, all he, and he destroyed you know like he's uh, like oh shit Lisa. that was you but who knows like it's definitely you know yeah there's so there's so like much for the next the next one they're they're turning his his life and his mysteries into a movie mm-hmm. and so like the next one's on a movie set like, like scream be so so fucking fun yeah. yeah like scream kind of yeah well i want to ask you all this and then we can talk about our final thoughts we've been talking about it for an hour already but do you how important do you think we talked about how much money is getting paid but even apart from that figure it's it's rare in this day and age to see a like top of the line production value the most famous cast around, you know, kind of the height of their careers um, in a, a drama, you know, like in, in a non CGI thing. How important do you think that is for Knives Out? Like, obviously, all the best direct uh, uh, actors want to work with Ryan Johnson and stuff. But is this part of what makes Knives Out special? The fact that you've got Batista and you've got like all of these great like A-list stars acting in a movie where they're kind of just yeah you know at a dinner party together like for the next one are we thinking it's got to have you gotta have brad pitt and angelina jolie in their first movie since you know <laughs> mr and mrs um, smith since that weird divorce movie that they that, like a, yeah that she divorce. directed or something <laughs> uh um, yeah i think it i think it's like crucial to it uh especially mm-hmm. These days when like um, many of the biggest stars are like, you know, in the MCU or they're in like big kind of action things, I think, uh, you know, there, there's a reason that the first one was a hit. And not only, I think, because it was really well made and well written, I think like people really enjoyed seeing you know, good actors play characters and like fun characters too, um, you know characters that are uh you know have an angle to them and are kind of interesting um outside of just like a actual mystery um in play so i think yeah like i I think like a you know probably every actor in hollywood would probably want to be in one of these movies um i think the audience loves it and um yeah i think it's a it's a win-win for everyone real like really yeah yeah, totes. Big, big. I mean, yeah. I think it's, I, I can't think of the last time you get such a giant cast and all in an ensemble. Well, you get. I mean, the Hercule. The unfortunate thing is, like the Hercule Poirot movies, the Kenneth Branagh ones are coming out at the same time as this. So you, true. You got Army Hammer. So it's like you know you're saying all this stuff. Like Andrew brought up, you know, Murder on the Orient Express and stuff. Like all of that. The I get the Christie archetypes and stuff were set like long ago. Um, I like that Johnson is taking that and subverting it with like you know with tropes that you haven't seen before. Um, so like, I think he, you know, the, the, the big cast, uh, regardless of who's in it and stuff is probably going to be central to the, you know, to the experience of the next knives out mystery or whatever. Um, but it, you know, it's obviously going to be very different. I mean, this, 
the way he played with the players here was very different than one that than how he played with the family from the first film. So, um, hell, like the next movie can have a bunch of like teens or like fucking maybe it's a kid's birthday party or some shit. Like you can, <laughs> there's so many ways you can kind of like just oh, do fun. do an ensemble movie that it's just like it's it's yeah. it's wild. Like you can do a wedding, you can do like a. You know, yeah, like I said, like a kid's birthday party or something. Like it's it's all sorts of like, and especially for the knives out tone, like it kind of lends itself to these more, uh, you know, wackier like ensemble situations as opposed to the uh, not wacky in to say, but just maybe not as like you know. And if it is serious, then there's there's obviously going to be some sort of like humor injected to it, like maybe irreverence or like I don't know. I don't, I don't something something probably like that. So there's going to be some irony. Yeah, yeah, yeah something. I get those. Get those Stranger Things kids. One of them killed one of them. I, I was yeah. going in the opposite direction. I think uh, that would be fun. But yeah, go old. Go to like, like a, a retirement, a retirement party home. or like a like a sixty year high school reunion. Get some like old school. Act, get Pacino. Get uh, a yeah. get De Niro. Get them out. Ooh, Arnold uh, Schwarzenegger. Yeah. That would be awesome. I mean, like, yeah, some sort of, yeah. Like, like get that, some yeah. older actors who can <laughs> Clint just Eastwood. be old. Like, let them just be old because Hollywood hates people being old. So, uh, you know, just like, yeah, that'd Mel be, that'd be fine. That would be really cool. Sure. Well, like, Mel Brooks, I mean, well, like, Hill and Marion or something? Like, we'll add, like, gro- like you know, some gravitas to, like, whatever project yeah, they're in Hell or something. Just, like, that'd be Hell awesome. Yeah. Well, and Harrison you can, Ford. You can even add that, old med- people. that meta element, too, where it's like, man, they can all be sitting around telling stories of, like, the heyday and, like, oh, man, we mm. used to be so good and, like, we were the best and, you know, um, that type of stuff because they really were, you know? Yeah. But, um, yeah, that's uh, – and all these hey. concepts, like, I'm sure – um it's just super fun to write with so i can expect 20 30 more of these yeah you're just you're you're talking about all these old people being in movies makes i'm just gonna watch the expendables um tonight (laughs) um let's go around the horn give our final thoughts on glass onion a knives out mystery brent any final thoughts on this before of course you'll watch it again on christmas morning i don't even know when this when this is coming 23rd right like two days before christmas i think okay I think. Uh, yeah, this would be a fun Christmas watch. Um, yeah, no, I, I really, I really love this movie. Um, like the second I got out, I was like, <clears throat> I was like, man, it really has been a bit, a little bit weaker of a year, I guess, just in terms of like movies that, that really made me feel like glass onion made me feel, mm-hmm. um, which is just like coming out of the theater, just on a total like movie high, um, just like a great feeling. Um, yeah, it's just so funny, you know, funnier than the first one, really twisty. Um, like I said, like it's, it's awesome seeing like some actors who, you know, I hadn't really seen, uh, too recently and see them like kill it. Uh, like Edward Norton has so much fun as, as Miles, um, playing that, that kind of guy. Um, and, uh, yeah. And I, and I really just like love the ending too, just seeing him kind of, uh, get his, uh, come up and from um, from Helen there at the end. Um, so yeah, I I loved it. It's great. Do you have final thoughts on on Glass <laughs> Onion? Um, I think we're really fortunate to have Ryan Johnson in the filmmaking scene. It doesn't really matter what. I think he's going to he, he like people are going to look back on his movies and they're going to elevate their own movies does that make sense like this, this is gonna these, his movies are gonna be classics to the point where it's like holy shit like you need to study either the way he writes or the way he directs or whatever because uh, the way he puts casts together and i heard that he's really pleasant on set too he's not like one of these other you know he's not david or russell or something you know and so um yeah it, it and that, that's what I, I it translates to his sets and uh, like you can tell like not only the fun that we're having but you can tell it was fun making it also where like he's in the pool like oh it's my dream for to direct from a pool and he's there like directing inside the pool with the actors um you know in his swimsuit and stuff like that and you're like man um and it translates on to every aspect in this movie i think um uh, it is a little bit uh, a, a ton grander than in every aspect um uh, than the first one i love the first one as uh, an introduction to that to the idea but this shows the potential of what it could be in the future and you know and on so it's really good for sure yeah ryan johnson i think i mean it takes a while i mean knives out came out you know what four years ago maybe even longer than that and you know it you can you can 
you can see the the me- the mechanics on screen, like how long it probably took to structure all these and weave them together. Uh, John, uh, what are your final thoughts on Glass Onion? Dude, Knives Out only came out like two years ago, didn't it? Am I wrong on that? Oh, shit. I think 2019. 2019? So a year after The so Last three. Jedi? That's three fucking years. wild. Two years after Last Jedi. Oh, yeah. Yes, you're right. Yeah. Sorry, I'm getting my things right. back. I was like, 20? Yeah. Yeah. I was like, holy shit. Well, anyway, I mean, you say that takes a while, but that actually was pretty fast. Um, I guess for between Knives Out to today, it was, it was a long one. Um, I can't wait to watch this again. This, this movie is great. Um, in talking about it with you guys, I think I have more of an appreciation other than, you know, uh, that's a little bit above my first reactions, but, um, you know, all the stuff that you guys talked about, which is like the little things y'all picked up on, I wasn't actually, I didn't pick those up at all. I can't wait to do that. Um, the movie is, you know, it's, it's, it's a hell of a time. You know, if you've like, if you like movies like this, if you like, uh, hell, if you're a fan of like any one of the cast members individually, I think you should obviously watch this movie because everyone is at the top of their game. Uh, I loved it. It's a great flick. It's probably one of the be- better movies I've seen this whole year. Um, you know, and also one of the better movies I've seen for this podcast in a while, <laughs> in a long while. So, like, um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, if anyone is, um, if this episode comes out before the, um, you know, the premiere on Netflix, then, yeah, I mean, you have our wholehearted recommendation. You should definitely watch this when it comes out. John, you didn't like The Raid 2? I'm just kidding. But also, um, you know what's crazy? Damn, I forgot. Go ahead, Emmanuel. It, what? You don't remember what was crazy? No, it, it's, it's fucking gone. I had it, and I was like, man. Uh, oh, uh, yeah, I remember. So I remember telling you guys off mic that I was like, man, I don't remember this movie. I just got off of like a 10-hour work oh, yeah, at shift. Yeah. I did, a, 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 a 10-hour uh, shift at work. Um, I didn't know. Uh, I didn't get the chance to like research it or look, uh, look it up or read anything about it. Uh, anything. And I remember telling you guys, like, I don't remember jack shit, so hopefully you guys carry me through this. But as we were talking about it, it's such a good movie that everything in great detail came pouring back. Coming back, yeah. I think that's, and, and again, like, it's going to reward a rewatch, but this is just stuff we noticed from watching it watch, once. Yeah. So I can't even imagine what, what happens I wanna, um, during our next episode. Yeah, like Knives Out, uh, or Glass Onion Part again. 2. Um, I just want to acknowledge uh, the Drew's method of stalling is an art. Because um, that's just hilarious. So he's just like, it's fucking crazy, but oh, never mind. I just like, he's saying it just, <laughs> yeah, he's, he's doing he it. Was, he was like, he's stalling. Like, he's like, there's something coming. Up. And then, like, it comes. For which sure. is funny. I there's think some I'm discipline actually pretty there. good at public speaking. There's some discipline there, though, because <laughs> I will, there's been loads of times, and I think uh, if you listen to Countdown Strikes Back, it's very apparent that I start talking and I'm like, I don't know where the fuck this is going. I'm just like, hmm. Hey, All right, that's cool. the art of podcasting, my friend. Yeah. You know somebody's playing this while they're like, according to yeah, trying to hide their shit so- sounds or whatever. We saw the Ven- <laughs> we saw that um, Delphin and and oh Drew was there too, but um, well actually Drew watched the whole thing, but I think Delphin was over at my house when we were watching Vengeance one time, which is a movie at uh, it's a movie on Peacock uh, with B J Novak, and mm. uh, he goes through um, he's a ba- I don't want to summarize the whole thing, but he's a podcaster, and we're watching on screen. He shows what he does and what this company that makes podcasts do. And we're just like, oh shit, we don't do that at all. <laughs> like, <clears throat> there's actual work going into the podcast. Yeah. Sorry, you guys <laughs> like heard we me cough. We, someone like a company would have cut out that cough that you just did. That weird. Yeah, noise. yeah, exactly. And um, <laughs> no, we're leaving it in. Marin. Well, they also. Yeah, we're probably. I'm. I'm probably going to accidentally make it louder. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're like intentionally fart at the end just to put it in. Yeah. But like, yeah, there's a lot of stuff like that where it's just like, oh yeah, but um, anyway, but podcasting sucks. What's the next thing? <laughs> I uh, I enjoyed Glass Onion and Knives Out Mystery. It's a little more satirical than the first one, even though the first one did have not even hints. It had some pretty overt themes that he wanted to throw in there, but this one is all about um, kind of the dangers of, uh, of cult of personality, the way that we kind of overcomplicate things mm-hmm. in the way that maybe some people garner success and then just continue on their weird grifts for life. Um, I think it's going to be interesting looking back at this time, whether or not there's more art that kind of fits this mold to deal with the outside world, you know, and that we live in and still have it be a really entertaining and seemingly general audience appealing type of movie I'm excited because we, you know, it's only been in theaters for a week and it had this much discourse. It's going to be in the- uh, in theaters. It's going to be in home box office yeah. Netflix forever. 
and nowhere else soon. <laughs> and so I'm excited for whatever that discourse is. I think I told Brent that last year, surprise, surprise, for some reason, Don't Look Up was watched by a billion people because they were at home for the holidays. And this year it's going to be Knives Out. And I'm excited for that because at least it's, oh, wait, I don't want to besmirch another movie. It'll be a good Movie you just did to watch yeah. for Christmas. Um, Whoopsies! I was gonna <laughs> say it if you if you did if you didn't. Hey, <laughs> uh, fun fact: I don't, I don't know if this is a fact, but how many of how many of the that those cast members you think didn't know what the fuck Twitch was? Like even after <laughs> the movie, <laughs> I feel I like that know. was all like yeah, they were probably no. reading the script and like, what is this? I feel like Norton yeah. and Batista probably too. And we're gonna. <laughs> Yeah. We're going to get more fun, like, anecdotes, but the casting of this movie was so fun. It was yeah. just, like, Ryan Johnson hanging out with these people to see if they'd fit I think and then hanging out with a different person. He described that. He says, like, we uh, – I just, he described the filming of this as, like, a summer vacation when they made a movie. Mm. Yeah, and they made a movie. Yeah. It. And that's basically what it looks like when you're watching it. Yeah, so that's wild. Yeah. That's, like, what I think of when we podcast. It's just a summer vacay – where you know the Wi-Fi sucks sometimes. Mm, yeah. People are farting and coughing. <laughs> it's great. Brent, what do you have to play? Uh, let's see. Uh, all I got is just the uh, Delphin Pod Patreon stuff. So go check that out. We uh, we do like fun top Oof. fives. We do uh, screen slush, which is us talking about new things we're watching old things whether it's movie tvs um it's a lot of fun to just talk about uh all that all that fun stuff so uh yeah go check that out if you haven't and the year's almost over it's almost time to review the new year there's a new uh, yeah, bunch of films that's, that's already that's, been announced that's right yeah um we're we're gonna be doing like a top five or top ten probably top 10 here pretty soon of the year. So that'll be fun. Uh, gearing up for fun award season thing. So uh, yeah, go subscribe if you haven't. Drew, what do you have to plug? Uh, Revenge of the Sequel, Countdown the Strikes season. Back. Uh, uh, Revenge of the Sequel, Countdown Strikes Back, Dirt Sheet Radio, uh, Happy Holidays, uh, Get Vaccinated, uh, everything on the Patreon. Uh, uh, that's it. Nice. Got, got a Happy Holidays in there. John, what do you have to plug? Um, what did he say? Fuck, he went through his so fast. I don't know if I have anything left. The countdown is happening. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, <laughs> are yeah, 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 some sort of countdown is happening. Countdown to infinity. There you go. I'm going to plug that. Um, anyone love y'all's? Do you guys still love Marvel content out there? Of course you do, since you know the box office is kind of showing that you still do. So, um, if you like it, go listening. Listen to the pod. Uh, Delphin and Sophie are doing some really funny stuff over there. Um, in this break, which apparently, <laughs> I don't know, that I, I'm going to listen to it too, to find out what they're talking about. Uh, but yeah, it's a good time. So. We're going to start again. <laughs> We're going to start with Iron Man. Um, go and check oh, it out. Cool. It's, it's awesome. Thanks so much for listening, everyone. Have a happy holidays, no matter what time this actually comes out. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>